My memories of Vancouver before the war are all very, very happy. The notion that I was Japanese never entered into, the, uh, into my life at all. For me, I was a Canadian. War. It moved on to a new climax at Pearl Harbor in 1941. Within a few hours of the event, Canada was at war with Japan. Fear of attack became suddenly real. Canada struck back against its own people. In British Columbia, the Suzuki family, along with 23,000 other people of Japanese descent, were rounded up. Their homes were seized. Businesses carefully built up over decades were confiscated. The proud Japanese-Canadian fishing fleet, the Japanese names painted over, became part of the Canadian Navy. Cars purchased with years of savings were taken away. But it wasn't just property that was confiscated. Japanese Canadians had to surrender their Canadian identity. Pearl Harbor led to a total shift then in the way that I perceived myself. Although I was a third generation Canadian, my country had said that I was an enemy and not to be trusted, that I had no rights along with my parents. My father suddenly disappeared. He had voluntarily gone to a camp in the interior, thinking that by agreeing to go, we might be left, but he was dead wrong. Working for the government for miserable wages, David's father would not be able to join his family for several months. We got moved out along with everybody else. My mother having, at that time, three children. I mean, I can't imagine what she must have been emotionally. Her husband was gone. She had to do it on her own. She buffered us from any anxiety or fear. And for a child of, of uh, five or six, I mean, it was all very turbulent and exciting. I remember vividly the, the train trip, and it was just fun. And we were going to a concentration camp, basically. Canada's camps held none of the horrors of concentration camps in Europe or Asia, but on a carefree young Canadian boy, the experience would leave an indelible mark. We ended up in a room that couldn't have been more than 12 feet by 10 feet, tiny room for, for four of us. In the morning, we would be covered in welts from bed bugs. The Japanese cleanliness is almost like a religion. The idea of going to bed in a room in which there were bed bugs must have been absolutely disgusting to my parents. In the same camp as young David was future author Joy Kogawa. Our whole class wrote poems one time, and his poem was, Mr. Brewster had a rooster. Those are the first two lines. It got published. Mine did not. He'd be chosen out of the class to be the kid that was the MC for concerts and things like that, and he was so articulate. I admired that. David's skill in English made him an outsider, even among the Japanese. The war outside did not stop at the camp's boundaries. Prisoners divided into two factions. One was strongly pro-Japanese. Kids reflected their parents' feelings. Their parents were very angry and bitter at the government. And so there was a great deal of, I hope that Japan whips the Allies and teaches them a lesson. Whereas I was only saying, you know, I hope Canada wins the war because Canada was my country. Of course, I'd get beat up for that all the time. There was racism against him from both sides. The, uh you know, Canadian side as well as the Japanese side. 